everybody. Welcome to Swordsmith Barrier Services. I'm Rebecca. This is my husband, Philip, and we got some comments saying, how do you know how long to leave your horse's heels when you're trimming? So Philip is here to explain all of that to us today. That's right. I grabbed a couple of horses from our herd. Uh, one is Manny, our stallion, and Bindi, one of our mares. And they're polar opposite. One is very upright in his feet, which is Manny, and then Bindi, the second horse, is very low on its ankles and so you can't just do the same thing to both horses you have to do it differently and so to kind of give you a little bit of a balanced view of the entire thing uh, we thought we'd grab those two horses to explain to our viewers today to you guys today um, how we deal with heel lengths and uh, if you have any further uh, questions please feel free always to mention them uh, to us on Facebook or on uh, on our YouTube channel and we'll try to make a new video for you. If you have a specific question about a specific problem that you're facing, please contact us. We would love to uh, yeah, address further videos this way. I thought we explained it to you to get a, how long a heel should be left. Do we cut them off? Do we leave them long? Or where is the line? And so this is Manny, our stud. He's an active boy. I hope he will play well with us. Becca, why don't you come down here to the ground level and to give us a nice shot here from the side so you can see uh, the pastern angle so there's three bones within the uh, within this lower section so they're called the pastern bones once it's right in the middle of the hoof and we're trying to trim the hoof no matter what horse we have in line with those three bones these three bones are also in line with the shoulder usually depending on how the conformation of the horse is um, why don't we get right to it and I explain to you um, what I'm doing. So here is my angle find. I built this myself. Uh, I know that he is quite upright and that has worked for him very well for years. You're looking at 55 degree angle on our um, angle finder. So I'll trim him probably cutting the heel as much as I uh, cut the toe off for him because he's very upright in general. As you can see here, I'm cleaning up the sole of Manny, taking all the loose stuff of the sole away. This gives me a good uh, base of um, how short I want to do him. Um, I prepare now the frog. And now I basically create myself a parameter around the foot where I want to nip it. That's basically the same length everywhere I want to take the same length of everywhere and uh, as you can see my nipper follow that groove that I just created perfectly and just a little bit of cleaning up and he's done as you can see here we left him at pretty much the same angle as before because that is what he's most comfortable with. So this is our second example, Bindi. She has very low uh, uh, heels and very long toe. Um, so she's the opposite of our stallion. We brought her in so that we can explain the difference of when we want to shorten the heel versus not shortening the heel at all. And she would be a candidate where we would just want to take the toe off. So let's have a quick measurement here. So here we are just over 45 degrees, I would, I would call it probably a 47 degree angle. So she's a lot lower, if you remember, Manny was 55 degrees. All right, I'll pick that up and just shorten the toe. Yes, here I'm basically picking out Bindi's foot. I'm already prepared to take a lot more sole depth out of the toe area. First I give her just a normal trim with all the loose sole being removed. Trimming the frog nicely. And there I'm starting to create myself a much deeper parameter. As you can see I'm really going deep there in the toe area, kicking away at it. Having another quick look, see that the outside is a little long, so I address that later when I'm rasping. And then additionally, 
for Bendy, I will trim the hoof wall to the thinner thickness. Uh, since she has uh, a different thickness in the toe area, which always creates more pressure on her heel. So I'm addressing that from the bottom. And in a minute you can see um, that I'm also doing that from the top. I'm cleaning up uh, the last little ridges that I created and get after that little uh, brushy area in the, in the wall there. As I said, I also address that uh, thick hoof wall from the top a lot more. You can see I take quite a bit of uh, hoof wall off there uh, since an uneven hoof wall in the toe versus the heel is also always putting more pressure on the heel. So I'm really trying to help those heels out there. I have um, cleaned now um, Bindi's foot up. I have trimmed it. I've shortened uh, the toe only. Uh, and now we are measuring the, the, the angle of the foot and we're coming to approximately 52 degrees uh, on my little homemade tool here. Um, so she is where she needs to be. Uh, her her past and angles are much better this way. Uh, if, I would be sh if I would be shoeing this horse, I would be much, much more upright yet. But uh, for a barefoot horse, this is probably all you can do without making her tender. Uh, by shortening her too much. But Bindi has always shown us she will drop her heel again. Uh, Manny always showed us that he wants to be very upright. And so I addressed the two different horses because of that in different ways. And I hope that helps you guys to uh, figure out what angles your horses might be, it might need to be at and what you need to do with those heels. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you'd like to see the next episode and the rest of the series, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and check us out on Facebook and Instagram.